Body Positive University 101. Liking what you eat improves nutritional absorption. This study on iron absorption pushes us to question how we think of eating and what bodies are capable of doing by Virgie Tovar. Okay. So one study says one element is absorbed better if the food is, apparently, less disgusting. I hope no one is so unscientific as to suggest that this implies. All elements and vitamins are absorbed better when the food is tasty. And that somehow it suggests people who are obese have taken better care of their nutrition. Because neither of those follow. It's like concluding that chihuahuas are better than poodles. Because a chihuahua beat a poodle in a race once. And then also concluding that all dogs with hypogenic hair are unathletic. A study looking at two groups of women, one Thai and one Swedish, showed that how they felt about the food they were eating affected how much iron they absorbed from their meals. From a 2007 New York Times article that summarizes the study's findings, People get more out of a meal, not just emotionally, but physiologically, when the food is a pleasure to eat. In one of my favorite studies, Swedish and Thai women were fed a Thai dish that the Swedes found overly spicy. The Thai women who liked the dish absorbed more iron from the meal. When the researchers reversed the experiment and served hamburger, potatoes, and beans, the Swedes who liked the food absorbed more iron. Most telling was a third variation of the experiment, in which both the Swedes and the Thais were given food that was high in nutrients, but consisted of a sticky, flavorless paste. In this case, neither group absorbed much iron. I couldn't track down this article unless they are referring to a letter to the editor that someone wrote. The wording was slightly different there, though, so I can't be sure. Fortunately, it doesn't matter. The second sentence clearly marks this article as an opinion. In one of my favorite studies... Not the kind of article you can use to support facts and science. Anyway, let me suggest a much simpler explanation to this experiment. Your gut and bacteria get used to digesting certain foods. If you introduce something strange, then your gut isn't going to react well. Further, if you blend it into a paste, there would be no expectation that the food would be digested at the same speed as back when it was only chewed. And if it's digested at a different speed, the absorption rate of various elements might be different. To conclude from this data that what matters is pleasure is at best sloppy, and at worst a bold-faced lie made to push some propaganda. She continues, in fact, in the aforementioned third variation, where they ate paste, the women in the study absorbed 70% less iron. Why is this wildly fascinating and important? Lots of reasons. Let's look at two of those reasons today. Reason one. This finding shows that enjoyment actually matters when it comes to eating from a nutritional standpoint. This flies in the face of current cultural beliefs about how the body processes food. Ah, there we go. We have now gone from a study about a specific set of meals and one mineral's absorption to what now seems to be a wild claim that involves all meals and all vitamins and minerals. Currently, our culture believes that all bodies process all foods in the exact same way. This belief has led to several problematic and reductive conclusions, including the belief that everyone should eat one single way, the belief that healthy eating is more important than joyful eating, the belief that if you give everyone the same food, they would all end up with the same outcomes. The belief that eating culturally relevant foods or comfort foods isn't a part of good nutrition. Oof, that was a lot of straw man arguments. Telling someone to eat fewer quarter pounders with cheese is not telling them to eliminate their culture's food from their diet. And it also flies in the face of the observation that ethnic groups that tend to eat unhealthy food also tend to have bad health as a result. If pleasure were the only thing that mattered, then morbidly obese people would be the healthiest of all, since they often choose to max out pleasure when eating. From an RPG point of view, they've made a min-max build, although it's not really clear what stat they maxed. And it's impossible to absorb vitamins and nutrients from a food that doesn't have any, no matter how your body processes it. Steak may taste awesome, but good luck getting vitamin C from it. So what you eat does matter, even if her argument were correct. We learned a few weeks back that in U.S. culture, 
Oh, that's nice of her to say that we have a culture. Most of the rest of the world considers us a cultural wasteland, so that's nice. Food is primarily seen as so-called fuel for the so-called machine that is our body. We learned that this idea is derivative of European thought. This body as machine ideology has lent itself to the calories in, calories out adage. This study makes a case against this reductive utilitarian approach to food and body. How? To begin with, machines are uniform. Are they though? Then how come my car leaked oil like an MF, while other cars from the same year were perfectly fine? Strange. If our bodies were, in fact, merely machines, then the findings of this study would not be possible. If the calories in, calories out ideology were accurate, then it should lead to similar rates of iron absorption in all the study's participants. But that's not what happened. So now we've gone from mineral absorption to calorie absorption, except calories in versus calories out already takes into account absorption. Basically, it doesn't count as going in if you don't absorb it. Calories in is the calories that you absorb, not the calories that you shove in your mouth. That's why people with IBS sometimes think calories in, calories out doesn't work for them. Because what's actually happened is their calories in is not the amount of food going in their mouth. Can anyone explain to me why the vast majority of studies cited by fat activists are from 50 years ago, excluding a few written and performed by Lindo Bacon, who strangely sells an HAES book? Reason number two, this fighting reminds us of the inexplicable amazing powers of the body and of the role of pleasure in creating healthy humans. When I began doing fat activism about 10 years ago, I never ever invoked scientific research. I hated how empiricism was expected of me whenever I wrote or spoke about fat advocacy because I saw this issue as one of human rights, pure and simple. She wouldn't have to invoke science if she stuck to the human rights aspects. It's when she gets out of her lane that people accuse her of being unscientific. Although, based on the cake video, I'm not sure how strong she is when she stays in her lane. Isn't it also our right to have a smaller slice of cake? Why did I need data to explain there's nothing wrong with fat people and all humans deserve dignity? Over time, as my work became more professionalized, I found I was unable to fight against the demand for the scientific basis of my claims, so I gave in. Honestly, I felt terrible in my body, because I knew intuitively that humans don't thrive and our lives are primarily understood through the lens of data, as they are now. OMG. Data and facts. Nothing worse than actual evidence. Or that line from the Marx Brothers film, Who are you going to believe, me or your lying eyes? Learning about these women's iron absorption filled me with tingly inspiration. That sounded very, very nerdy. It reminded me of my earliest conviction. There are many, many things that we can't explain and that we don't need to. Joy, dignity, love, connection. This is what humans need much more than a food pyramid. Or rigid understandings of how to create health on a mass scale through food? Is HAES becoming a religion? Does she see herself as an apostle of Lindo Bacon? Is that why when anyone turns away from HAES they're treated like Judas? If desire and positive feeling can affect how much iron a person absorbs from their meal, imagine all the incredible things that her bodies are doing all the time. Class dismissed. Well, the link between pleasure and nutrient absorption has not been well defended in her article. So unless she has further evidence, I declare this claim as not strongly supported by evidence. Class dismissed. And so the video comes to an end. Special thanks go to Hannah McNally, MMC, Cupcake or Death, and RIG for being at the mega supporter level. If you like the video, please consider clicking like and subscribe. If you really like the video, please consider becoming a member. There should be a Fat Logic video every other week, and in between one random video about whatever topic I feel like, usually a review of some video or blog that some fat activist made.